one. Lots of people were asking me what the battery biography actually is, so I decided to make this video to explain it to you on the basis of a recent and publicly available use case, which is the global electric vehicle recall by Hyundai due to the batteries catching fire. My name is Veronica Wright. I am a social entrepreneur and consultant for battery lifecycle management. In this video, you will get a rough understanding about why do batteries catch fire, how likely is it, and why I think we need to write a biography for each individual battery so really understand its life and history in order to avoid expensive recalls like that and optimize the battery value chain overall. This is the first video I created as Electrified Veronica. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel, share it with people that might be interested so I can prepare more content like that. So let's have a look at the latest and greatest news. After 14 reported fires, Hyundai Motors Company, a South Korean vehicle manufacturer, announced that they would recall 82,000 electric vehicles for $900 million because of the risk for the batteries of spontaneously catching fire. They're talking about 76,000 Hyundai Kona, 5,700 Hyundai Ioniq and some electric buses. With a per vehicle recall cost of around $11,000, which is by the way 30% of the new vehicle's net cost, this is supposed to be one of the most expensive recalls in automotive history. Well, there were other massive recalls, such as for example, in 2008, the one by Takata, where they recalled their airbags for overall $24 billion. Then also Tesla and GM recalled their vehicles quite recently because of a battery fire, but they could fix it by updating the BMS software. Now for Hyundai, this is a really special situation because they are replacing more than 20 million battery cells by new ones starting in April 2021. As of now, Hyundai did not give an official explanation of the origin of these fires. There are some rumors and news out there about faulty separators, about an anode overlap within the battery cells or a misalignment of the cell, but there is no official and conclusive clarification yet. Okay, so let's remind ourselves on the basic principles of lithium ion batteries. We have a cathode, we have an anode, we have two electrodes, we have a liquid electrolyte, and we have a porous separator that will allow lithium ions to move back and forth between the electrodes, but it will block the electrons. So these electrons are available as an active current source or drain, depending on if you discharge or charge the battery. So what you really don't want to have in a battery is that these two electrodes get in contact with each other because then you will have an internal short in the battery which will then very likely result in what we call a thermal runaway of the battery cell and eventually in a battery fire. So here you can see the battery temperature evolution over time once the battery was thermally abused. So it was intentionally brought up to a temperature that is around 100 degrees C or more. Well, if you heat a battery to these elevated temperature, you will have certain kinetically and electrochemically driven reactions, such as the decomposition of the solid electrolyte interface, and this will lead to a chain reaction that will increase temperatures even more until at some point the separator will melt. You will have an internal short, and due to the flammable electrolyte, you will have a fire, you will have temperatures increase within seconds up to a thousand degree, you will have hot gas coming out of the cell, and this is what we overall summarize as a thermal runaway and venting of a battery cell. I really like to show this example of Finnegan et al, where they triggered a cylindrical cell into a thermal runaway and you can really see this two hot gas streams and also particles ejected from the cell under this abusive condition. An example that might be more familiar to you is the lithium ion batteries that we have in our smartphones and the very where the very same thermal runaway leads to this battery explosions and battery fire. 
So let's think a little more about these abusive conditions. So what are really the scenarios that lead to this thermal runaway on a cell level? So there are several ones, but typically they are summarized into three different categories. The first one is a thermal abuse, which means either overheat or extreme cold. Both is not very good for the battery. The second one is mechanical abuse. So really an external mechanical impact, like a crush, like a penetration that leads to deforming of the layers and a misalignment inside of the cell. And a third class is the electrical abuse. This can be overcurrent, you know, like fast charging. This can be overcharged and over discharged by not respecting the physical limits that a battery has or and this is supposed to be the most common reason, is a spontaneous internal short. So that was not externally or actively triggered. Now, all of these scenarios either lead to a point or a surface contact between the electrodes and will finally result in a cell thermal runaway. Now, so far we talked about the cell's thermal runaway, but what is actually the root cause of these abusive scenarios if you take it to a vehicle level, as we need to do it for the Hyundai Recall, where all the fires that they have seen were spontaneously triggered when the car was actually in a parking mode. Now, if we think about the thermal abuse, so too high or too low temperatures, this could, for example, be a failure in the BMS, so in the software, of the battery, but this could also very likely be a cooling system failure. For the mechanical abuse, of course, this could be caused by an accident, so really by an external mechanical impact, but at the same time, a mechanical abuse could be a misalignment of the cells due to cell swelling. For the electrical abuse, this could be an external short, this could be fast charging, this could be again a failure in the BMS system, and especially for the spontaneous internal short, the root cause is very often a little particle in the cell, which can result from um, either uh, material deformation due to aging or also as a cell manufacturing defect or also from an impurity and the materials overall. So these are just some of the reasons that I want to mention in order to make you understand that finding the root cause for a battery fire can be really tricky. It is extremely hard to find the root cause, especially if you have information gaps along the battery value chain between the stakeholders and also you do not exactly know what happened to the battery, like how was it used, uh, where was it manufactured, which materials were used, where are they coming from and which purity do they have. So all of this is really important. Now, we have discussed a little bit why lithium ion batteries catch fire, but now I also want to give you some insights into how likely it actually is. We will again do this on the example of the Hyundai Recall. So what we know from the media is that there were 14 fires reported among the 76,000 Hyundai Kona electric vehicles. This leads to an occurrence rate or to a probability of 0.02% on a vehicle level. If we assume that the fire was initially triggered by one single individual cell, then for the 294 cells in the Hyundai Kona pack, this leads to a very, very small number to 0.000063% um, on a battery cell level. So this is kind of rare. It's kind of very rare. Nevertheless, Hyundai recalls all of these 82,000 electric vehicles globally and will replace all of these 24 million battery cells. Another thing I want you to understand and differentiate is between the probability and likeliness of a cell thermal runaway versus the propagation of this heat and the thermal runaway amongst the whole pack leading to a pack fire. While a thermal runaway of an individual cell has kind of a limited energy release, we really don't want to have a pack of 64 kilowatt hours to blow up and catch fire. And there are really clever and innovative solutions to actually mitigate the cell to cell propagation within a module or a battery pack by using, for example, thermal barriers, by using heat sinks and phase change materials and more. 
I always like to bring up the example of NASA. They developed a lithium ion battery pack for their spacesuits consisting of cylindrical cells and a very nice propagation mitigating surrounding structure. So this is supposed to be suitable for a manned aircraft. So overall, while it's kind of acceptable to have a thermal runaway on a cell level, there are methods to mitigate the propagation within a module or a pack and really avoiding a huge fire in the vehicle compartment. Of course, it's always a trade-off between energy density, between the space available, between safety, cost and so on. So I want to now start using the concept of a battery biography by putting these facts about the Hyundai recall into a more global picture, involving all the stakeholders along the battery value chain. And this will help you understand why it is so complex to find the origins of these battery fires. So first of all, what is the battery biography? The biography of a battery documents the life of a battery, including all stakeholders, processes and relevant information from raw materials to battery manufacturing to the different applications such as consumer electronics, stationary energy storage systems, electric transportation, all of this can be summarized into the first life of a battery. Now, once the battery performance has reduced too much for its first life application, we need to decide if it is better to directly recycle or reuse and repurpose the battery in a second life. Finally, we want to do as much as we can for reincarnating a battery and the whole battery biography starts again. Let's come back to our use case, which is the Hyundai Recall 2021 due to a battery fire risk. We're starting in the in-use phase with 82,000 vehicles on the road and 14 reported fires in the last two years. Here, the OEM, which is Hyundai, tries to solve the problem by updating the battery management system. This is what helped Tesla and GM. However, in this case, this didn't seem to resolve the problem. They still had fires in the in-use phase. Hyundai then involves the cell manufacturer, which is LG Chem. Both of them, Hyundai and LG, try to reproduce the failure of the batteries in their labs. The results of some tests seem to show that possibly a faulty separator could lead to some issues. A G-Chem then involves the separator manufacturer. Together, they investigate the purity of the materials in the cell. The latest news seemed to point to a folded anode tap and lithium plating causing the fire. Overall, I think based on this example, you can really see that all aspects of a battery biography are needed to be understood to solve problems like that. And we didn't even start about talking the second half of the battery biography, which would involve analyzing what happens to all these 24 million battery cells that Hyundai is now recalling. Will they directly recycle them? Will they check them and maybe reuse them? in new packs or will they repurpose them in energy storage systems? I am myself really curious what happens. So I really hope that the methodology of a battery biography, together with some insights into the physics of battery fires, could help you gain a more global perspective and seeing the bigger picture of e-mobility and electrification on the example of the Hyundai Recall. I really believe that collaboration and shared responsibilities along the battery value chain together with transparency in terms of sharing data and information between the stakeholders will lead to an optimized usage of the batteries and our resources for our electrified future. Thank you for watching and again if you liked it I am happy if you subscribe to my channel, if you share it, if you like it because this gives me the confidence and motivation to do more content like that. Have a wonderful day and goodbye. Ciao!